So first of all, ladies, gentlemen, uh, hello, good evening. Uh, and, and thank you, Mr. Mohamed, uh, for, for this invitation and uh, for this opportunity, especially. Uh, it's really a pleasure, let me say, uh, an honor to join uh, uh, you in, in this occasion, in this event, and to join the design talks uh, that you are uh, implementing uh, uh, all the year long. Uh, it's an impressive series. Uh, to me, I was able to follow some of them, especially in the past days. Uh, I followed the one, uh, uh, for instance, by, by Francisco Casascobo, and I was very happy to, to, to listen about his, his intervention. I'm very happy as well uh, because uh, I know that you are based in uh, in, uh, in Saudi, in Saudi Arabia, and, uh, uh, and, and that you have uh, an extremely uh, strong and, and large uh, network of connection uh, uh, with, with a number of professionals, high number of professionals, architect designers, people working with, uh, with, with architecture in general, uh, which is pretty relevant uh, and important and inter interesting uh, to, to me as well. Uh, what I'm going to propose now in my talk uh, is, uh, is really a kind of, uh, of speech, of talk, not really a lecture. I, I'm going to talk about my profession, of what I'm doing, of what I do, of our team, and, uh, and, and, um, and, and trying to stress especially this topic that I proposed as the main topic for today which is uh, heritage conservation and management in UNESCO designated sites. Um, as you can read from this uh, little introduction to the talk, I choose the, those words, uh, cultural heritage matters. I choose them because uh, uh, it's really, it's really uh, what, uh, what characterize my work. When I say my, I, I refer to, to my profession and my team uh, as well. Uh, cultural heritage is something uh, important. It's something not just related to, to the past, not just related to, uh, to the protection or the preservation on the, on, or the conservation uh, of it. But as I'm trying to, to present through a few cases as well, is something really related to uh, to our present and most of all to our future. This is my experience and this is what I, I'm really trying to, uh, to talk about today. First of all, uh, yes, I already started talking about me. I don't want to talk just about me, but uh, of course uh, of, of what, I, what I do. This is a very old picture. I, I found it recently. It, it is from 20 years ago and it is uh, in, in Athens in front of the the Parthenon. And um, yes, I found it, it uh, very, very, I was a student in architecture at the time. Um, now I am an architect, of course, but my work is, uh, is pretty much um, linked and related to other, other professions, other professionals and other field of expertise. So I'm trying to, to tell you about this. Uh, of course, uh, I invite all of you, uh, if, if you are interested, uh, to, to connect or to take a look to, to my LinkedIn page, which is, uh, which is pretty updated. But a little bit to introduce more in detail uh, myself and my work. Uh, I work for an organization which is based in, in Italy, in Torino, north of Italy. Um, as a secretary general for the Sant'Agata Foundation. Um, and uh, I also teach at the university. Uh, I, have, uh, um, I have two courses, basically, one at the University of Torino on, on UNESCO programs, and one at the University of Pisa on uh, uh, cultural projects, uh, on the management of cultural projects. Then I, I have uh, also the, 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 the pleasure to work um, as coordinator for different masters, namely two, two master, international master programs, which are based here in Torino, uh, where I'm speaking from, uh, one on cultural property protection and uh, another one, a second one in world heritage and cultural projects for development. Uh, then I also coordinate an academy, which is a short program 
uh, done, implemented together with UNESCO on uh, UNESCO and sustainable development. And uh, a, very new, a very new program, which I, I very uh, love to mention, which is titled Heritage Beyond Walls. I'm going to mention it uh, later on as well. Um, okay, this is just a list of, uh, uh, of my profession, but um, this is especially to introduce a little bit the kind of projects and the kind of approach that, uh, uh, that we do with our team and that I'm going to um, introduce briefly, briefly now. Uh, first of all, I told you that I'm working with this group and uh, the, the name of this group is, uh, it's a foundation by, by, by law, uh, but it's basically a, a, an organization, a not-profit organization working with culture, uh, cultural heritage, and especially working with uh, the economics of culture. So I said I'm an architect by background, but most of my work is in this field and is shared with other kinds of professions. Uh, we have two main areas of work. One is uh, obviously related to heritage and especially to heritage in its role for, for development. And the second one on culture and innovation. Uh, in other words, the production of culture, of contemporary culture, including contemporary cultural heritage. Uh, what we can call, uh, in other words, uh, uh, cultural and creative uh, industries also, uh, or cultural and creative related professions. In these slides, uh, you have uh, uh, some, you can find some keywords which basically are represent the areas, the main areas of work uh, of, our, uh, of our group. And uh, in, in, in brackets, you see UNESCO and Sustainable Development is one of these areas, one of the most important, if you want, uh, for us. And when I say important, uh, it's because also it is one of the, 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 uh, the most uh, uh, lasting from most, most time. It's around, uh, uh, it's more than 10 years that we have a, 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 a link uh, with, uh, with UNESCO and we develop a project together with them or for them or for, for uh, sites uh, which are designated uh, by, by UNESCO. So this is just to, to have to build a, a frame of what we do, our fields of expertise. And another very important point to our organization is, uh, uh, is our, which is at the core of our mission, is uh, the, um, the task of creating um, partnership, facilitating, creating, consolidating partnership at the international level. Here in this map, you can have an idea of uh, our main connections, we have a number of, uh, of partners, we have a number of, uh, uh, we have a, a quite large, a very large, let me say, collaborative network, almost all around the world. And, um, and we have a, we call it a, a global community of professionals, especially young professionals, starting from our students, our course students, um, which are, uh, which is pretty large and pretty strong. So I'm mentioning this because it's very core to us uh, to play this role uh, of uh, facilitating and, and creating connections because we believe that in our work uh, for culture and for cultural heritage, uh, having uh, regular occasions to develop uh, new, um, new connection, knowing new, new people, new organization, new experiences. Uh, it enable uh, a lot our capacity to comply to, with uh, the, the, the huge and, and big challenges that uh, culture and cultural heritage are demanded in our times. And of course, I'm referring to the uh, global emergency that we are living in this period we have been living for the last year, but not, not just about that. I mean, big challenges were already present related to, to globalization, to the diffusion of, uh, 
uh, of new technologies, uh, to social changes, to climate changes. So we need, we need, this is a work that in my opinion, we cannot do alone or standing by, by ourselves. So uh, a reason more to be happy to, to, to share and these, these thoughts, these insights with, with you uh, today. Mm, let me mention also briefly, uh, these uh, two, two documents that we uh, just released, just it means uh, a couple of weeks ago, maybe one week ago, we released our uh, report 2020 of our activities 2020. Here you can have a feeling of it, uh, which are our core, our organization core values. So of course, economics of culture is our field, but uh, uh, culture for social quality, sustainability, cultural districts, creativity, education and cultural diversity and cultural innovations are the main uh, values on which our work is based. You can have a feeling a little touch of the results that we had during last year and you see our main area of work. We work uh, on research. Uh, most of our team uh, are researchers. Uh, we work on training, education, capacity building, and uh, on consultancy uh, for local agency, international agencies. From I mean, from the very local to to the to the to UNESCO, so to the level of to the big level. So and and you can read some of our project of last year, but I'm going to mention some of them. Um, I'm mentioning this report because. Uh, um, in our in our work, it's it is clearly emerging a demand uh, to cultural organization, or better, to uh, organizations working in the cultural field as we are, uh, to uh, produce evidence of our work. Uh, so uh, there is an emer emerging demand uh, of equipping. Uh, this organization with uh, reporting, monitoring, evaluation, and especially with uh, strategic planning. Uh, this is something very important. This is something that uh, we, we do normally in our work for other agencies, but of course we do it also for ourselves. So, so this is the strategic plan 21-22. Uh, that we just uh, released. And you see, we have uh, uh, defined three main uh, topics of work for the next two years. One is uh, on developing models for the management of cultural heritage. Another one is related to uh, territorial attractiveness uh, and, and tourism, which in, in a lot of cases is something very close, very related or overlapping with uh, um, the, the, the with, with with culture and with cultural heritage, with the presence of cultural heritage in certain areas, and a third topic to enforce our engagement on contemporary cultural uh, production. So I'm mentioning these two documents, the report and the, the strategic plan, uh, of course, to briefly introducing you to them, but especially to highlight the fact that we are facing a, a, a increasing, an evidently increasing demand of equipping uh, cultural organizations, again, organizations working in the cultural field with this kind of tools. At least uh, this is happening in, in Italy and in Europe. In my experience, uh, I, I'm, I'm seeing that in many areas of the world, there is uh, this need to uh, make a good use of, uh, of resources. Uh, and so strategic planning is really, is really core, is not, uh, is not an optional. Um, so this was a little bit uh, an introduction to, to me, to, 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 the com to the organization for which I work, I work for, and uh, uh, a little bit about our approach. Um, I would like to spend uh, uh, a, a few a few minutes also um, to to introduce a few keywords related to this topic: heritage conservation and management. Um, especially from the today perspective, of course, this is the perspective of our side, our work, 
But uh, today, conservation of cultural heritage and management of cultural heritage uh, have uh, some assume some very specific uh, um, meanings. So cultural heritage, as I said at the beginning, is not just for preservation, it's not just for uh, protection, safeguard and conservation. Of course, they are important, but there is much more. It is not uh, just about the past, it is much more to me uh, and uh, actually uh, also to, to, to the main, let me say also to the main, from the, the, the point of view of the main organizations working with cultural heritage, it is much more about the future than to the past. Uh, let me briefly scroll this, uh, which in my work uh, can be considered uh, as a sort of evolution of uh, approaches to, uh, to, to cultural heritage. Uh, if we look at uh, 20 years ago, I'm referring also to the UNESCO experience. I'm not mentioning it because we don't have <clears throat> so much time to mention, but uh, also from the UNESCO experience, uh, if we look at 20 years ago, uh, cultural heritage was considered as something to be conserved, stop. Um, then uh, there was a sort of evolution through that we can call, if you want to put a label, like a value-based approach. So, uh, for instance, uh, UNESCO, you know, uh, the most important uh, uh, convention of the, the most known and important is the World Heritage One. And to be a World Heritage Site, you, you have to be, you have to comply with the uh, requirement of having an outstanding universal value. So, um, when UNESCO started to require uh, their site, their site manage, managers to equip themselves with a management plan, uh, the concept of value became very, very relevant. No? Not all the values are outstanding uh, in, in a place. Um, more, recently, more recently, the approach was shifting more uh, to putting at the core of the attention uh, people. So not, not just the object, not just the place uh, per se, could be an archaeological site or an historical city, but the people uh, interested or affected by the presence of, of heritage. And this is a concept very important because it's a sort of, uh, uh, I, I, I'm not going to say revolution, but uh, it's, it's totally a different approach. In other words, we don't protect the stones uh, because of the stones. Uh, uh, but because of the people who can, uh, who made the stones, who made the, 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 what we consider now cultural heritage, and who can um, uh, use, make a good uh, uh, use uh, uh, of, of it, of them today and in the future. And in, in this moment, in my experience, uh, from what I'm, 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 I'm seeing and from, from my work as well, the new frontier is uh, to put cultural heritage at the core of a sustainable development. When I say sustainable development, of course, I'm referring uh, to, uh, to the international documents, the, the, uh, namely the, uh, the United Nations Agenda uh, 2030 for uh, sustainable development, uh, and which identified the 70 in sustainable development goals. Of course, you can see, you know, this is very brief. Uh, I, I know I am uh, for sure it's, it's, I'm simplifying a lot, but uh, uh, you see that uh, there is a sort of evolution of approaches toward cultural heritage. And uh, of course, conservation is important. It's the pre-requirement, you know, without conserving, without protecting, we risk not to have a cultural heritage to, to work with, but it is not the end. It is the pre-requirement for making some much more than just uh, conservation. Uh, a few references, if probably some of you, most of you, could are already familiar with them. But if you want to take a look, especially on the um, on, in, on the field of of historical historic cities, a few references on which you can find also. Uh, um, my, my written contribution. One is uh, the uh, HUL, H-U-L, Historic Urban Landscape 
uh, guidebook collecting a few experiences in all the regions uh, of uh, from all the regions of the world uh, on applying uh, this HUL, which is a recommendation um, released by UNESCO in 2011, exactly on the role of historical cities in uh, development. And the second one, again, on historic urban landscape is this uh, book, Oper Operationalizing the Historic Urban Landscape, a practitioner's view. Again, uh, this is just for you to have references on concrete practical cases. Actually, the cover, this was uh, uh, published by, by uh, uh, Witram, Witrap, which is a category two UNESCO center based in Shanghai. And uh, the picture that you you see on the cover is the case uh, uh, that I was presenting, uh, the case, the city, the historical city of Naples in, uh, in south of Italy. Anyway, these a few references if you, if you want to take a look. Uh, but to introduce uh, again, uh, I, I would like to, to make a, a step forward, like mentioning uh, a, few, a few keywords. Um, to describe uh, the, uh, the approach that uh, we are having uh, towards cultural heritage. First of all, the, the first key, key word is heritage. What is heritage? What, what is heritage about? No? We have uh, uh, the, the classical image of, of, of the monument or the, the big palace or the big, uh, the, 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 uh, the important architecture, of course, this is, but uh, heritage is, is a much more larger and complex uh, um, thing. So it's, of course, tangible, and you, we can include archaeological sites, uh, palaces, monuments, uh, um, cities, historic cities, or landscapes as well. But it is also related uh, to uh, the intangible component uh, or the intangible expression elements as they are defined by UNESCO uh, through the 2003 convention uh, of, uh, of uh, exactly intangible cultural heritage. So heritage, it is not just the built one. I know that uh, we are architects or mainly most of us are architects, but it's important to us as well to understand that there are several and complex dimensions of, uh, uh, of the, attached to the concept of uh, heritage. The second keyword uh, that I choose to, to, to put as sort of foundation, sort of pillar, uh, which, is, uh, which is core to, to, our, to any of our projects is, uh, is are this society, society and economics. In other words, we don't deal, we don't work uh, with uh, heritage, heritage buildings, uh, uh, just because of the sake of, uh, of the buildings. Uh, we are making it for, for us. And this means that our work as professionals uh, is not just uh, the technical um, dimension. It's also the capacity to investigate and understand the role of certain places, certain expressions uh, having heritage significance for the people, for the local people and for us. Because when we talk about heritage, it's not just about uh, the local, uh, especially when we refer to UNESCO. UNESCO is, uh, is, is a global um, mechanism and heritage is uh, by definition something that should uh, be shared uh, by, by everyone. Because because it belongs somehow, of course, it belongs to the to the place and to its people. But it belongs; its significance belongs to to everybody. This is very important always to keep in mind in our work. I I, I believe uh, the third the third keyword is this one. When we refer to culture and to cultural heritage. Uh, sometimes uh, we tend to, to limit uh, the, the, the field of work by using this definition. Uh, I told you I'm working most of my time with other professionals. Most of them are economists or from economic disciplines. And uh, in economics, um, 
the, the, the definition is, is this one, culture is a capital. Um, this is a picture of the National Library of, of Torino, uh, ju just, to inform, just to inform you. Um, culture is a capital, what does it mean? It means that any cultural heritage expression, any, it has a, a, a double, at least a double dimension. So let's refer back to the concept of value. In any places, in any historic cities, we can, we can uh, easily, uh, in most of cases, easily identify uh, the cultural value, but also the economic value. So when we use, and we do, we like, we, we, it's important to us to use the word capital, we refer to both of them. So the cultural value, given to the, I don't know, the, the artistic, the architectural, the, the historical, the documentary component, but also the economic one uh, related to our, um, our time, related to the society, to the role of, of heritage in our current life, in our, in our current uh, dynamics and society. This may sound a little bit uh, theoretical, but it's not. Uh, again, culture is a capital. And if culture is a capital, uh, we need to invest on it to make it, uh, to use it properly, uh, to, to invest even uh, 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 economically. Uh, that's why we talk about uh, management of culture. Uh, if you remember my words, I was starting saying, Cultural heritage means conservation or meant conservation at least 20 until 20 years ago, if you want to put like a number, no, a date. Uh, but culture is, cultural heritage is not just for conservation, I said. Uh, it's, it's, it's also, it's mainly for uh, making a good use for us, for our society. So when we say, that's why we, we use the expression management. Um, management, it means uh, uh, how to use, how to set uh, mechanism, functions, uh, how, how to understand a, a cultural heritage place could be used in our time and in the future, including the capacity to invest, because when we talk about sustainability, uh, it's not just about green things. Uh, it's about, uh, of course, also the economic dimension of sustainability. And we all know that economic resources are limited, are critically limited in certain areas of the world. So, and, and culture and cultural heritage is, is, is immense. Let's think to, to Italy, no? We have uh, thousands and thousands of um, cultural heritage sites, of museums, of uh, heritage places, and uh, the, the, the economic resources uh, uh, devoted to them or which shall, uh, which shall be devoted to their protection, conservation, use, etc., are absolutely not, not enough. And uh, this is just the case of Italy, but this is a kind of uh, uh, true almost, almost uh, everywhere or in, in most of countries in the world. So management is very critical, uh, it's very core when we talk about cultural heritage. The fifth, the fifth concept, the fifth uh, keyword, I put the hashtag just to, just to make it clear that I'm simplifying the, the message, but again, it is not just about monuments, it's about people. We uh, work, we investigate, we do, uh, we invest as well in cultural heritage, uh, for um, improving uh, our life quality, for improving our opportunities to benefit from visiting a place, from understanding, reading about, knowing, for enriching ourselves, our life, our opportunities, even our entrepreneurial opportunities. Let's, let, let's think to, to, to tourism. Uh, as I said, most of heritage places in normal times, of course, uh, are attractive, are attractive for, for tourism. And cultural tourism is, is a big, uh, represent a big um, share of, uh, of the overall numbers of tourism, of people, um, of motivation for people, um, for making them moving all around the world. 
again in, 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 in times which are normal and not uh, in, in these ones uh, which are living uh, by now. <clears throat> future, future is, uh, is the other, the sixth keyword that I would like to put as a pillar because uh, again, uh, um, guaranteeing um, accessibility to heritage, to cultural heritage, physical accessibility, but also, um, let, let me say virtual, but I mean also uh, uh, knowledge, uh, the, the capacity to know and to learn uh, from cultural heritage, it means for us having a, a better opportunities to build our future. And uh, again, this is not uh, this is not just a theory or a, or a nice concept. When we live uh, in a in a city which is uh, uh, let's say characterized or full of culture or of cultural heritage, both uh, from the past and from the from the present, like in the picture that I'm showing, uh, we we know that we live in a better in a better uh, environment, that's for sure. No, uh, economists call it uh, externality. It's a positive externality. When I walk uh, or if I open my window and I see an heritage, uh, an historical palace, uh, uh, it, it's it's an added value. No, and uh, this picture, uh, these are my my daughters, and uh, the picture is in Torino. It's an historical uh, square with uh, a, a contemporary. Uh, lights, uh, uh, um, um, art uh, um, thing uh, that we they, they they put in during Christmas time. So, and we are I mean we we can feel it when when this happens in our city. So it's about us. It's about our quality of life. And uh, the seven keyword that I wanted to you to to use it. It's it's totally. Uh, it's totally at the core of my work. When we work with cultural heritage, I say we, I mean our work, uh, we always keep in mind that uh, it is not just for the stones, for the walls, but it's about uh, um, transmitting, of course, the stones and the walls, etc. but transmitting the values which are attached uh, to what we consider being a cultural heritage. And uh, uh, beyond uh, means uh, also to be able to appreciate uh, and to understand uh, the diversity of expression of cultural heritage. In other words, cultural heritage should be, is, but not always uh, it is possible to make it work like that, but should be a common language uh, connecting uh, uh, all of us, uh, uh, all, all the people, all the countries, connecting the, the present uh, to the past and to the future. So beyond, beyond the walls is something that, that to me is very critical to, to keep in mind. So I choose these seven keywords, uh, which I rapidly uh, mentioned, because uh, uh, they really define um, the, the, the sort of boundary. Again, I don't like the word boundaries, but the sort of uh, uh, frame uh, in which we, we operate. And uh, I'd, like, uh, I'd like to mention a few, a few projects, a few experiences that we, are, we have and we are implementing. Um, this is a World Heritage Site in Italy, the city of Genova. Uh, and the, the, the Strade Nuove and the Rolli Palaces is the name of the World Heritage Site. As you can see, it's, it's, a, it's a big uh, city with many historical layers, uh, with a big port, one of the most important uh, in, in Italy. And the World Heritage property is basically what they call the old city, uh, most of it. You can see here in this map, how, how large is uh, the, the, the are the boundaries of the, the World Heritage property? Basically, are thirty six different uh, palaces, old palaces. Um, I have a few pictures just to give you a feeling of what we are talking about. Um, inside, 
as well. So palaces which, which are extremely rich in history, in, in, the, in collections, in frescoes, in everything related. So it's cultural heritage, it's outstanding cultural heritage. And in this case, uh, in the middle of the city, which is, uh, which is a very uh, layered and uh, even, uh, even complex city in terms of uh, uh, contemporary dynamics, no, uh, of, uh, of it. So our work was to prepare the management plan because when you are awarded a site, you are required to demonstrate that you are taking care, you are managing. So UNESCO says you need to, to, to prepare and to implement a management plan. I'm very sorry. Um, then uh, how did we structure this management plan? Um, in brief, uh, uh, we worked to understand the current situation of the city, not just of the heritage place, of all the city. Um, then we drafted based on the current situation of, of the picture of the current situation on the needs expressed by, by the people, the organizations. Uh, we drafted actions for improving the, car, the current situations thanks to the presence of the World Heritage Site. And the third part of the plan is to find and define tools for making it real. And when I say tools, I'm talking especially about uh, knowledge and planning, community engagement, uh, regulations, so urban regulations, and financial tools. So as you can figure, as you can easily read, uh, this is a management plan for a world the site. Uh, and these are the four main areas of, uh, of, uh, of tools um, where uh, conservation is just one of the terms. Uh, we have conservation, but we have development. And we have connection because we believe that cultural heritage is something that should be and should be used to facilitate uh, um, connections uh, to other places, but especially to other sectors of the society to really play a role uh, of an added value for, for the city. So this is the structure and the experience that we had uh, in, uh, in Genoa. But another case that I would like to mention is this monumental complex, this uh, huge and impressive uh, architecture, uh, Baroque palace uh, here close to Torino, which is again a world heritage site named Stupinigi. Uh, you, you can figure, no? you can feel from this picture how, how big this complex is. And it is not just about uh, a palace, a building, a, a Baroque architecture, which was planned by Filippo Iuara, one of the most important uh, Baroque architects, but uh, it's about, uh, um, it's about um, uh, an entire uh, complex uh, composed by buildings, uh, gardens, uh, park, a park, rural compounds used by, uh, to, to produce uh, to produce, uh, I mean, uh, uh, agriculture. And all these uh, correspond to the definition of cultural capital. So much more than the walls, the building, the collection uh, inside of this place, which is actually uh, used by a museum. And you can see how it is inside. Um, so why I'm mentioning this case, because uh, the problem, the, 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 the plan here was to define a master plan for enhancing the whole complex, um, going much beyond uh, the, the conservation, which is, of course, a need of this place, uh, and especially to define a scheme to invest, uh, I mean, money uh, for making this place working better than the current situation. So we try to map all the components of the complex. So the, the palace, the park, the land, uh, the other premises around the, the palace, the agricultural field, the, the historical roots. Uh, this was a, a hunting palace. So it, the area is full of uh, hunting uh, 
uh, roots. Uh, uh, probably you saw the deer. There was a deer on the on the top of the dome. Uh, of course, the, the the deer hunt was uh, was the main uh, sport of the royal houses uh, here in in Torino. And this is the structure of the master plan that uh, we we drafted. Three action plans, uh, as you can see, about culture, but also about tourism and also about socioeconomic activities, especially meaning the agricultural uh, activities which are present in this area. Uh, in other words, uh, um, the, the master plan, the management plan in this case, was exactly to, um, to integrate all the activities present in this place in a single, in a single plan. Uh, to make all the stakeholders, all the main resources uh, work together, ideally. Here are a few maps, uh, so you can have uh, a look uh, now to, to better understand how we worked on the different scales. So the scale of the complex, uh, identifying uh, all the, 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 the nodes where to implement uh, the main activities related to culture, to tourism facilities, and to, and yes, to, to, agricult to the agricultural uh, chain, chains, and the scale of the complex, uh, and this is clearly a, a simple master plan identifying all the possible, all the future uses of the places. But we try to attach each of the uses um, planned for the complex with their uh, economic side, economic potential, economic value. No, this is again cultural capital means to understand the cultural potential, but also the economic one. And uh, in this sense, we also drafted this plan of investment for uh, fifty for a period of fifty years, progressive investment, in which. Uh, uh, we estimated, we calculated that from the current capacity of 1 million uh, of, uh, of euros of total volume attached to this place today, uh, by investing, uh, this is the full picture. Every color is attached to one of the component of the complex. In other words, we really try in our work to work on the two dimension, uh, the needs of the, of the places, the potentiality poses by, by interven intervening on cultural heritage, but also the potential to create uh, benefits in terms of uh, uh, job creation, income generation, expanded volume of or, or capacity, economic capacity of a place, because this is what we mean with sustainability, not just uh, protect uh, because it's a must and it's a must, but also to understand how to keep this work for the longer term, for the longer run. And this is not just true for Italy. This is another case that I'm mentioning. It's from Mauritius. Um, and uh, in that case, uh, um, the local uh, World Heritage Property Agency uh, asked us to, um, to draft uh, a local economic development plan. As you can see, I'm using different, uh, uh, different uh, names, management plan, master plan, local economic development plan. Of course, they, 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 they are different words, but basically they, they serve, when we come to heritage, they serve all to the same purpose, which is the one that uh, I just mentioned, making cultural work work and sustain in economic terms. This is a map of the, of the city of Port Louis, which is again a, a port city uh, with a World Heritage Site, which is very, very small in the middle of the port. Um, and this is the plan uh, that we drafted in that case. So the plan was basically how to enforce the presence of this very small World Heritage property, which name is Apravasi Gat, if you wanna, um, if you're curious to take a look, how to enforce it uh, by setting other 
cultural related activities uh, in uh, cultural uh, heritage uh, premises uh, around the historical city center. Uh, so you can see the creative district, uh, the, the, the food cluster, uh, etc. What was the problem here? The problem was that uh, uh, these historical buildings are collapsing. They are not used anymore. They are even demolished by, by real estate investors willing to, uh, to, 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 to exploit the position in the, the location in the historical city center. But of course, with the risk, which was not a risk, which was already the reality of losing forever uh, the historical dimension, the historical value of this, of this country, uh, um, which is not replaceable for the future. So we set a mechanism, I'm not gonna read uh, all this, but we set a mechanism which, was, uh, which is basically an economic, a financial mechanism. In other words, uh, we set, uh, sorry, we set uh, what we called a uh, revolving fund, which basically was intended to allow uh, real estate to, to invest, to build, but to in certain areas and with following certain rules, uh, regulations, but also uh, devolving a, a percentage of their investment to the recovery of the historical houses, historical buildings in the city center, not just the recovery, but also the functioning of them. Again, the question was financial and uh, it was impossible to, to say, no, we want to protect everything because you can imagine how big was the pressure by the real estate companies. So we set uh, a regulation that was basically a financial, a financial regulation to protect and to safeguard and to yeah, safeguard for the future, to make a good use of cultural heritage for the future. That's why we called local economic development plan because the, the, the core was really a financial purpose mechanism. And uh, this is a project that uh, we moved to, to the Pakistani Punjab. Um, in this case, uh, it is a project that we did together the, uh, the International Art and Culture, sorry, the Institute for Art and Culture of Lahore, um, about a few Sikh temples uh, in this area, with the goal of making them work for, um, for the local community, for being really touristically attractive, and what I would like to mention, yes, you can see in these slides that we were trying to identify the values, the different values attached to the buildings, to the temples, which are not just uh, uh, the architectural ones. Uh, but here we, we did a huge work also in terms of uh, capacity building. Once we identified the core actions to implement related to these temples, we really wanted to uh, train or sensitize somehow the local communities, the Sikh community, uh, to take care, uh, to share the, uh, the, the action to protect uh, their, 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 their area. So we, promote, we, we produced this little booklet, which was uh, distributed and introduced and uh, on which uh, a capacity building activity was uh, was uh, set and this project was financed by UNESCO and was financed by by the World Bank as well by the World Bank through UNESCO and uh, to be precise um, and this is also very very interesting to me no the logic that the big international agencies are adopting to approach cultural heritage. Again, in terms of investing on it for uh, producing, generating benefits for the people. Um, a few other cases, uh, a few other cases, I'm, I'm briefly mentioning them just to, to enrich a bit the picture. Um, in Azerbaijan a few years ago, three, four maybe years ago, we, we were asked to uh, understand how to uh, frame um, cultural heritage
heritage places and tourism destination places in a way to uh, make uh, to create uh, uh, um, a, um, a sort of district logic so synergies among different cultural heritage uh, and touristic destination present in the country in the whole country uh, how to make them uh, work and how to govern uh, them and uh, this is crucial when we talk about uh, cultural heritage i said at the beginning connections are crucial connection among places uh, for instance when we want to set uh, a touristic offer but also connection between uh, cultural heritage cultural heritage institutions and the other sectors uh, for instance uh, this the the the, the economical one, the commercial ones, which are of course uh, totally important when we talk, uh, when we come to tourism. Uh, this is a second project that we are doing in Pakistan in, in a wonderful site, which is uh, Kila Kona Kazimbag in Multan. Again, uh, with the same logic and with also the same, more or less the same partnership, um, how to manage, how to set a management plan for a place which is uh, amazing but still needs to frame uh, the rules uh, the rules the, the guidelines for a, a very for functioning in a in a rational in a rational way um, back to italy mm, this is a place this is a, a, a an abbey uh, you can see it in the picture uh, on which we we just released a, a plan for uh, yes for for managing and for valorizing the, the economic and, and cultural. So um, there is a component about the the restoration of the abbey and of of the complex, but again uh, with the logic of understanding how to make it work also in economical terms, demonstrating for the next uh, years, for the next periods, through indicators, through monitoring, through a, 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 a program of uh, regular evaluation, demonstrating that the money spent in uh, repairing, recovering, restoring, uh, are generating an impact uh, uh, to the, not just to the place, but to the overall area to the economic activities to the work of farmers which are set there to the next municipality which are um, willing to promote this place for touristic purposes etc again the combination between in, in, uh, investment on on cultural heritage and investment on people is is crucial we cannot find any kind of resources without making evident this correlation between these two dimensions not in theoretical terms but in very practical terms again indicators about culture about economy um, <clears throat> about tourism in order to demonstrate that the investment work and similarly we were asked a couple of years ago by unesco from pen to um, to produce an impact, uh, a socioeconomic impact assessment for Angkor, or the site, which is one of the most wonderful and important and known archaeological sites uh, in the world, and big uh, archaeological site in all over the world, uh, with UNESCO uh, after, after 20 years of, uh, uh, sorry, 50 years, of uh, uh, of spending money trying to understand uh, the results of it and based on the results how to move on for the next uh, other 50 years i guess because a place like like this is always in need to a constant investment um, when we, we when we use the word impact assessment, probably you realize that I'm using again different words: management planning, local economic development, master plan, impact assessment. They are all related in my in my work and in our experiences. This is in Kotor, World Heritage Site, Kotor Bay, uh, a place uh, one of the the, the 
one of the, the, the places that we that is famous for its beauty, but also for its uh, over tourism issues. In that case, UNESCO required uh, two years ago, four years ago, uh, an heritage impact assessment. In other words, we have heritage. It creates, uh, yes, it creates a, a, an economic impact, but probably too much in that case. So how can we um, mitigate, compensate, and readjust uh, through a specific instrument that uh, uh, that is pretty known at the international level, which is the HIA, uh, HIA, sorry, Heritage Impact Assessment. This is pretty common in those places like Kotor, like Venice, like Angkor, uh, where tourism became uh, too much to be uh, to be managed. When benefits are uh, leaving the space to uh, to criticalities, to problems. But impact assessment is something that we did, we do, for instance, this is the Egyptian museum, uh, the second most important uh, Egyptian museum in the world after Cairo, of course, but in, in Italy, it's one of the most important and the most, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a must. If you come to, if you, if you already come to Torino, probably you, you already went to visit the Museo Egizio, but if not, Please, please do because it's a wonderful experience and, and model of, of management. And we did a socioeconomic impact study for this uh, heritage place. And it was in, impressive uh, to understand, to learn how uh, investing 10 million of euros per year, this is more or less the, the volume uh, of investment every year for this place, uh, can produce a total of uh, almost 200 million of euros per year of uh, benefits, of economic benefits, direct ones uh, from ticket selling, but also indirect or induced ones, uh, for instance, to accommodate uh, to the accommodation facilities or to the to the restaurants uh, in the area. So when we talk about heritage, uh, in, in this perspective, you see, and in Italy, this, this point is pretty sensitive, you can demonstrate that it works. You know, it is worth too, because a lot of people are going to benefit from, from, from that. And again, this is something that uh, we are seeing, on which we are seeing a huge increasing demand from cultural institutions, big and small ones, to comply with. Uh, for instance, in this moment, in this period, we are developing the strategic plan and the business plan for the Royal Museums of, of Torino. You see them in the picture. It's a very large complex, probably. I don't know if it is the largest museum, in the biggest museum in Italy, but one of the biggest for sure in terms of uh, dimension, really, where the, the, the self-portrait of Leonardo is, is conserved. So again, if you come to Torino, if you came, probably you went, but if you come uh, when, uh, when this, this emergency will be over, uh, take the occasion and, and take a look to visit, uh, to visit this as well. Again, what's the news? The news is that uh, one of the biggest and most important uh, museums in Italy is equipping itself with a business plan. So not just something about uh, the, the, the internal functioning and the management of its collections, its spaces, its gardens, uh, galleries, etc., but uh, how to understand, how to monitor, how to plan also the financial and economic component. It's crucial. It's really becoming crucial. And another topic which is really becoming crucial is about uh, transmitting, transferring uh, all these, uh, all these capacities, all these sensitivity, sensibilities uh, to the next generation. When we talk about investment, I stressed a lot the economic uh, uh, question, which is very important now. But uh, uh, um, investment means also investment maybe especially let me say means especially investment to the next to the the, the young generation the next generation um, we that's why we talk about sustainability that's why we talk about future 
and there are a few projects that we have launched under under a lay, uh, an umbrella that we called yes youth empowerment for sustainability in which we are really investing and receiving many many promising feedbacks investing resources in uh, making our youth uh, fully aware of the potential that is attached to uh, heritage places uh, because we want them to find an opportunity we want them to to work on, on on that to understand how important they are and to work and to find opportunity for their profession their career and, and their future <clears throat> The last, the very last point that I'm going to mention is this one. is it's, it's an initiative that we launched a few months ago, but it started really a uh, couple of weeks ago, uh, and uh, which title is Heritage Beyond Walls. So if you remember, I used the word beyond already as one of the, the, the pillars of our work. But uh, uh, I want to recall this. This is a project uh, that we are doing for Syria. We are doing for, 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 for all of us, not just for Syria, to be, to be honest. I'm personally involved in this because I, I, really, I really feel uh, close to, uh, to the situation that this country, as all the other countries facing war, are. Uh, uh, are facing situation of isolation and and situation in which future is under uh, under uh, under several uh, issues. Uh, we want we believe that culture cultural heritage uh, must play a role in this case for for the new generation for the present the youth the new generation but also for us to understand that again we live in the same uh, in the same world we we speak in the end the same language uh, sometimes we tend to forget it but cultural heritage I, I i believe that could help all of us in in remembering how important uh, how important it could be in uh, in creating development in creating future in creating peace so yes i wanted to conclude by mentioning this um, and uh, I'm, I'm stopping. I'm stopping here with this, this uh, let's say, list of experiences uh, and a uh, few insights. Uh, thanks a lot for your attention. Of course, I'm here. I can stay with you for for questions. Thank you, Dr. Alessio. We 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 are waiting everyone to send their questions. And uh, okay, so we have some raised hands. So we will take. Uh, Ekbel, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the name properly. Okay, so the first question we had, uh, it's not working the mic or the cable. So we will um, uh, go with the first question from Francesco, Dr. Francesco. He says, I would like to ask you if you have an opinion on Al Ula heritage site here in Saudi Arabia in case you have had the chance of seeing it or reading it. That's it. That's it. So I'll read the question again. I would like to, this is from Dr. Francisco. He says, I would like to ask you if you have an opinion on Al Ula heritage site here in Saudi Arabia, in case if you had the chance to seeing it or reading about it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah I, got, I got it. Um, yeah, no, not, I didn't have a direct experience, so I cannot give a, a really proper, proper answer on that. I, but I, I heard, I, I, I read something. I've read something also from from some colleagues of mine and from some some students of, of mine, and it looks uh, it, it it looks extremely uh, promising, promising, extremely interesting in terms of the potential to to 
I mean, to the touch of potential and, and to the possibility to develop um, the, the attractivity uh, of this uh, of this place. Also, in terms uh, of, uh, and this is a much more general consideration. I know that Saudi Arabia is pretty active in, uh, on one side, promoting the, the preservation of uh, of, of heritage of heritage places. And, and but also in in promoting uh, what we can call the creative uh, creative industries. So my my feeling again, it's a general comment, but um, I think it's proper. Uh, the general feeling is that uh, uh, these two dimensions should work together. Um, we need uh, really to keep. Uh, the, the potential attached to conservation of past, uh, what we inherited in terms of heritage, and uh, the, the production of new cultural contents, they should work together. In our experiences and also analyzing uh, our history, uh, the most important, the most attractive, the most successful uh, cultural heritage places are those ones which are offering to the to the citizens and to the visitors and to the tourists, not just the tourists, but all of, of these categories, offering not just the place, but also the contents. Also the contents in terms of new and contemporary production. Not by chance, I was presenting the Royal Museums of Torino, uh, not presenting the picture of the place. I'm telling them, I'm gonna tell them in, in the strategic plan for the future, not to present the building, but to present the contents and to present how they work with the contents because uh, otherwise uh, it, it limits a lot uh, the potential of development. So I guess in a country like Saudi Arabia, given this policy framework on heritage and creative industries for the next future, mm -hmm. uh, given the existence of policy frameworks, this would be very, very important. Okay, uh, there's the second part of the question. Um, you should you showed us a picture of Cotor Pay with a cruise ship. Maybe you should comment as an Italian on the Venice approach to the same issue, mass tourism and cruises, and how the city or the Italian cities to some extent are adjusting to this new scenario of the opposite low tourism due to the COVID. Hmm. Hmm. That's a big question. That's a, really a, a big question. Um, yeah, we were used uh, until uh, February, so until one year ago exactly, it was end of February when it started in Italy, the, the lockdown, the first lockdown. We were used to, to know Venice as, but Rome, Florence, as full of people. Like it was impossible to find a picture of Venice or Piazza San Marco, if not during the night, but empty. And uh, meantime, we, that now we are used to a new normal in which these places are fully empty, are, are totally empty. Um, and we are learning a different way to, to approach and to appreciate uh, these places. Um, there is a question uh, about, uh, yes, there is a question about resilience, how to, how to make our heritage places resilient uh, to changes, um, not just these, these dramatic changes, but also climate changes. Venice is, is very unique, you know, in, in, in this, uh, in this uh, it could be, could be paradigmatic of many, many uh, different stressful uh, situations. Uh, there is not a proper, uh, a, a full reply. Most of cultural heritage sites are trying to adopt a, a planning which is flexible, which is uh, um, kind of, yes, resilient for the next years, uh, trying to predict possible uh, impacts coming from lockdowns, so being closed, or coming from other kind of uh, risks. Uh, so one of the effects was to push cultural organization to plan better, try to figure better, and try to have a, a plan B, you know? Uh, if the normality is gonna change as we learned, it could. Uh, 
um, this is what the, the, the most evident effect. Of course, another consideration is this one. Um, in Italy, in the last years, there was uh, like a, a rush uh, for numbers. So uh, most of the policies attached to cultural heritage places were based on the goal of developing the audience, uh, not just in Italy, in Europe, let's say. Uh, so audience development was the goal. Uh, but we learned some already knew before, understood it before, but now all of us know that developing audience is per se kind of uh, meaningless. I mean, to me, totally meaningless. No, it's not about developing the, the audience. It's about developing the values, uh, the offer, the contents, uh, the, the cultural and economic dimension. The audience will come. Uh, but uh, if we plan only thinking to the target, to the audience, everything uh, uh, is going to be uh, forced in these terms. In Italy, when, when the, uh, the lockdown started, we realized that uh, all the main uh, cultural sites, uh, including museums, uh, I mean, calculating all the main of them, uh, the public ones, they were losing kind of 20 million euros per month. Why? Because all the economic gain was based on ticketing. Because of this policy of rushing for numbers, rushing for developing the audience, attracting more visitors, selling tickets, that's it. We realize now that this is a big problem because in case of limitations, lockdown, closures, etc., we cannot rely only on ticket selling. We need to produce contents, to sell contents, to use the media, to use other cha channels, to, uh, to propose something different. Uh, of course, these are very preliminary and rough reaction to such a big question, but uh, I think that this, uh, I believe this, this uh, should be core in our future policies, considering that uh, the pandemic is here, I don't know, if there will be others in the future or other cases or climate changes or whatever. Now, let's try to learn from what happened. Okay, we have a question from Christina. Which would you say from your experience are the biggest threats were, which lead to the failure of implementing the planned actions in the management plans of forward heritage sites? Yeah, this is, uh, again, it's difficult to generalize. Uh, it's difficult to, to, to say um, a general answer because it's, it really depends on case by case. But uh, um, let me say that uh, uh, difficulties are most of cases related to the stakeholders. So uh, management plan, uh, um, UNESCO asks sites and site managers to adopt a management plan. But we need to be fully aware, fully aware that uh, managing a site, especially if it is an historic city, if it is a large site, um, it is not just about the responsibility of the site manager. The responsibility of the management should be much larger than the single uh, manager or the single agency. Uh, which is deputed to, to manage. Uh, this is totally critical. In some cases, uh, confusing the, the management of the property uh, as uh, the management of, uh, I don't know, a, a company, uh, as, as, he, as if it is the management of a kind of private company, uh, could create a lot of uh, a lot of problems. In other words, we need shared responsibility. We need when we have a world heritage property, uh, not to forget that it is a world heritage property. It is not just for the locals or some of the locals. In most of cases that I know, um, world heritage site lose a lot of uh, opportunities 
uh, coming from being a part of UNESCO. So being part of a, a worldwide community because the tendency is to privilege the local questions, the local issues, uh, which to some extent is understandable, but uh, it's, it's, really, um, it's really something uh, um, wrong to me, wrong in terms of uh, not catching the full potential of being part of UNESCO in terms of uh, networking possibilities, accessing to sources of knowledge, information, of uh, funding, of partnership. If you are UNESCO, if you have a label by UNESCO, if you are designated by UNESCO, could be World Heritage or Intangible Cultural Heritage or even a Biosphere Reserve. I mean, designations, there are many designations apart from the World Heritage one, which is the most famous, of course. Uh, you can uh, get uh, really many benefits in terms of visibility, in terms of attention, in terms of getting resources, partnership, etc., attracting ideas. But of course, all these should be managed. And if you lose this dimension, only thinking to the local one, uh, I think that this is uh, really a, 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 big, a big pity and a big issue also in making the local dynamics uh, uh, work. I know that I only partially, partially replied to the question, but again, it should be seen case by case uh, what could be the, the, the constraints of implementing a World Heritage Management Plan. But I'm sure that always it's about uh, a matching of the different interests uh, of uh, stakeholders. Okay, there's there's two points from Dr. Abir, which is actually, she's asking, what do you think about them? So she says, world heritage less tends to globalizing local heritage, where the heritage side doesn't anymore belong to its local people, but rather to the global people tourists. I find this is clear in the uh, contradiction with heritage for people theme. And the second part, which is critical heritage studies today, strongly claim that heritage is uh, politicized heritage is uh, exploited to serve certain political and economic ends. What do you think? Yeah, I I agree uh, on the fact that these are points. Mm -hmm. uh, these are points very 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 relevant and, and very present. Uh, globalization of cultural heritage is uh, is an issue uh, which which stands uh, which goes very close to the politicization of, um, of cultural heritage. Um, that's, uh, that's a difficult point to, to answer because, um, because of course, uh, being designated by UNESCO, it means to, to accept, to uh, follow certain um, a certain, I mean, the rules that are part of the convention and its operational guidelines in the case of World Heritage, and to accept somehow the mechanism, which are political mechanisms. I mean, uh, to be nominated to UNESCO, of course, it means a huge technical work, a huge, huge technical work, of course, but in the end, the decision, we know it's, uh, it's, it's taken by representative delegates of, of states. So it's always a political game. Um, again, the two dimensions should, should, go, should go together. What I, what, I, what I can tell on this, uh, that uh, it, it could be very good to investigate the data. Uh, before getting an opinion. Investigating the data means uh, understanding the relation between uh, countries, uh, political priorities, uh, uh, and uh, decisions taken by the, the committee, for instance. Sometimes we talk about something without not having very clear in mind what is the evidence of data. Uh, but it's important to have it. And I know that there are some researchers, that, some scholars that are already working on that. Some colleagues of mine as well are working from many, have been working for years already on this point. I can also mention that there is uh, this movement uh, named Our World Heritage, which is basically raised a few months ago 
uh, in order to, to understand and especially to push, to move uh, uh, people uh, uh, to try to um, improve, to improve uh, possibly the mechanism of functioning of, uh, of the world heritage system. Uh, but in the very end, uh, my, my opinion is that uh, it would be rather, apart from any, any enforcement, but it is, it is not possible to fully separate cultural heritage from uh, political questions. Uh, don't take it in the wrong, uh, in the wrong way. No, don't, don't, don't misunderstand me. Uh, I'm not saying that cultural heritage should be used for political, like propaganda, etc. It's not about this, but I, I mean that uh, um, cultural heritage should be attached to our society, including uh, the, the political issues of our society. And we live uh, actually in, in a, in, we live or we, we are supposed to live in a global society, in an open society where information flow everywhere. So uh, I, I feel that it is risky to attach cultural heritage to political meanings, but I also feel that it is uh, uh, impossible to detach cultural heritage from uh, the good meaning of politics. Uh, let me say this. So I don't want to be really naive on this concept saying uh, no culture must be separated from politics because uh, uh, it's not what I think. Culture should, culture and heritage as a culture, as part of culture, uh, are part of our society. When we separate uh, culture, heritage from the rest uh, of our uh, society, uh, from the other sectors, uh, it is an, an even more risky um, uh, distortment that we are doing like the case of Venice that was mentioned before. Why Venice is considered to be so uh, kind of uh, in Disneyland somehow. Let me use this as to shorten the concept. Uh, because poli uh, policies, political choices in the past years were basically um, targeted on separating, keeping separate culture from the economic activities. And of course, when you separate the culture from economics, e economics wins always. The case of Mauritius, uh, Port Louis, you know, uh, an entire city, historical city, at risk to be erased by real estate uh, developers because you separate culture from economics. And again, you always lose, always. So uh, culture should be attached, cultural heritage should be attached to our society, including to political balances uh, of, of our society. I was going to wrap up with that question, but there is one important one, says the Western model of, of preserving heritage is being imposed globally. No localiza localization of perception, especially with having international institution controlling heritage such as UNESCO and European. How to deal with heritage from within its culture? Yeah, it's true. Uh, it's, uh, again, it's, it's evident that there is uh, this uh, this question of uh, 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 standardizing approaches uh, to cultural heritage uh, on uh, the the Western uh, experience and, and model. I fully agree about this. Um, our I, I I don't know I I don't have uh, oh, I'm very honest. Uh, I, I don't think to have like a definitive solution to this because this is uh, what we know, what happens, this is the history. Um, what we do in our work is always to try to uh, learn from uh, the, the locals uh, and to balance our knowledge, our experience, our technical knowledge um, with the uh, local, with the priorities of the locals, with the needs of the, and the culture, uh, understanding the culture of the locals. Uh, we just, uh, when we do international projects, we always try to keep just the technical, uh, 
the technical competence, but uh, we spend quite a lot of time of, for dealing and understanding which is uh, the, uh, the local view, the local approach. Uh, I, I personally, in, in international projects, I personally propose myself and my team is the same um, as to learn as occasions to learn more than occasions to teach. I say that I, I'm involved in many different uh, training and capacity buildings programs, uh, but uh, in all of them, including the university ones, including the master ones, what we do is not to, uh, is not really to teach in a only one sense way, but is to create a, a sort of uh, uh, collective, um, collective learning environment in which everyone is somehow enabled to propose its view, its experience according to, to, to his or her uh, background, level of experience, etc. Why this? Because uh, cultural heritage, culture in general, is a matter which is uh, uh, not exactly uh, similar to other technical disciplines. We don't have a cultural heritage science. Uh, we, we cannot uh, speak about the science. No, it works like, like that. No, uh, there are no precise uh, rules. There are some, there are some rules, but uh, there are no definitive and precise rules. Uh, when we talk about culture and cultural heritage, uh, the, even in economic terms, uh, there, it's, it's not, of course, uh, for profit. It cannot work. Uh, as a, as a company, no, because there is always a collective, a part of the value which is collective, which belongs to the collectivity, which is the local with all its needs and the global. As I say, the heritage is, is for all, should be for all. So um, this is what, uh, what we, again, it's not a definitive reply answer, but this is at least what we do, uh, trying to, to keep far as far as possible from any kind of uh, uh, let's say imposed model we work on models for management of cultural heritage but i myself uh, this may appear contradictory i myself uh, am, am pretty aware on the fact that uh, they cannot exist perfect models definitive models to approach uh, uh, cultural heritage questions because the, the number of variables uh, is uh, different in quantity and in, in quality per each, uh, per each case, case by case. So this is my answer. Okay, Dr. Alessio, thank you again for giving us this talk. It was very inspiring and informative and thanks for answering all the questions. It was my pleasure. Uh, I hope it was useful. I, it was my pleasure to share my time with you and, and some of these insights with you. I'm very open to collaboration, uh, to collaborations. Uh, our organization is very open to, to set uh, uh, possible, uh, uh, again, networking, partnership, uh, whatever, with the Arab region being, being critically strategic to us. So, um, I would be very interested in, in having uh, eventually some feedbacks on, on this as well. Thanks a lot for, for all your attention. Thank you a lot. Take care. Ciao. Grazie.